Hello and welcome to the Definitive Guide to Definitive Edition Modding. In this series, we'll be going over almost every aspect of Age of Empires 2 modding, from data modding to UI modding, map scripting, scenario editing, and much more. First, though, we'll just be going over the basics of modding, what it is, and how it works. So, what exactly are we doing when you create a mod for AoE 2? Well, in order to make changes to the game, we could go directly into the game files and make the changes we want. However, we then have to send the entire game if we wanted to share our mod with others. Instead, what we do is make copies of only the handful of files we want to make changes to. So let's see this in action. One of the best ways to learn how to mod is by downloading other mods that accomplish something similar to what you're trying to do and seeing how they work. If we go to the in-game mod browser by going onto the gear, mods, and browse mods, we can see all the mods public avail publicly available for the game. Let's subscribe to a very simple mod. This changes the picture of the main menu of the game to the, the women's history icon. Clicking on the open directory button will take you to the location on your computer that the mod files got downloaded to. I'm also going to close Age of Empires 2. If we search through these folders, go to resources, in common, WPFG, resources again, main menu, we can see this culprit image file, main menu bg.jpg, and we can see that it is indeed that icon that the main menu will be replaced with. So when modding AOE2, there are two important locations on your computer to know. The first is the folder where mods are stored. The second is the folder where your vanilla game files are stored. Right now, we're in a subfolder of the first location because we're looking at mod files. If we go back up the directory tree, so we go back up and up and up and up and up and up, we can see that all mods we downloaded are saved to the subscribe folder right here, and any mods we create can be put in the local folder. Right now we don't have any in there, we just have this empty info.json file. This mods folder is important to keep track of, and I actually have it pinned to my quick access. As you can see right here, it directs, takes me directly to local and subscribed. Now let's find the second location where your default game files are. Go to your Steam game library and right click on AOE2DE. Go to manage then browse, browse local files. Here is everything the game needs to run. Graphics, libraries, text files, audio files, and even the game application right here. It's all somewhere in this folder. I suggest you keep this folder pinned as well. I have it right there. So now that we're in the game files, we can discover how the mod we down downloaded actually works. How does that mod tell the game to change the main menu image and not the loading screen image? Well, you might notice that these folder name names are quite familiar. Look, we have resources, and then among others, we have common, and then among others, we have WPFG, and then resources, and then main menu, and we have the exact same name file, main menu bg.jpg, and this one is actually the default vanilla file. There, it has everything it has the exact same spelling. When loading a mod, the game searches through the mod files, and if it finds any exact replacements for the vanilla files, it will instead use the mod files. So congratulations, now you know how AoE2 modding works at a fundamental level. You can also download mods, find them, and see how they accomplish what they're trying to do. The idea of copying game file structure actually applies to modding most games, so you can begin your journey in other games as well. Thank you for watching.